Uh, so, good morning, presenter and participation. So, can you hear me clearly? So, welcome all of you to the Viet, to the virtual Vietnam International Convention 2001. And on behalf of the organizing committee, we would like to thank you so much for your participation and contribution to our annual convention workshop. And we are Tunga and Zidu, the presentation moderators today. And we are so delighted that all of you still stay here. Uh, nearly the lunch time, and we hope that it will be a good chance for all of you to gain some valuable knowledge and experience as well from this following session. And before the presentation, please um, remember that uh, in case that you have any questions or concerns about the presentation, please feel free to leave them in the comment session or uh, maybe send me directly so that we can gather all the questions in for easy response in the Q&A session. And please remember that the Q&A session lasts for only five to ten minutes. So now um, let's welcome the presenter. Um, Ms. Annie Nguyen, and about the presenter, she has been working as a university lecturer of English at Thay Bac University in the Northwest of Vietnam in 2008, and uh, she got two prizes at the National ICT competition in 2014 and a TSO International Convention of Wit in the USA in 2017, and uh, she got a lot of um, uh, a lot of interest in the teacher training and she owns herself as a teacher trainer, organizer, coordinator and leader in a range of professional development projects. And so now it's my pleasure to turn the set screen to Miss Speaker Annie Nguyen. So Miss Anne, please. Okay, so can you see my screen now? So good, yes, morning to, good morning to two moderators and all the participants. Thank you for uh, the introduction. And uh, as you know, my name is Nguyen Đức An, um, but you can call me Annie for short. I am delighted to see all of you virtually in my presentation about EFL teachers' readiness for online teaching in the COVID-19 pandemic. And hopefully you may find my presentation useful. As uh, we all know that the event of COVID-19 pandemic has greatly influenced the whole world and led to the social distancing and locked or lockdown in many places. And as a result, the same transition from the traditional classes to online teaching and learning happened rapidly. And the first social distancing uh, was uh, between March and April uh, 2020 uh, for most schools and institutions around the world independent of whether teachers were prepared or not. And according to uh, Kukusas in uh, 2012, the rapid transition to full online teaching has constituted major changes in teaching practice at any level from the individual, institutional, and cultural factors. And there's no doubt that the shift to online teaching at the time of the COVID-19 pandemic has put a teacher in a unique and um, demanding situation which require, require quickly adopting the forms of um, technology-based uh, teaching, communication, and collaboration, which were new to many, uh, of, to many of the teachers. And from my observations, many EFL teachers in my province found online teaching too difficult and impossible so they did not teach online in the first lockdown in May, in March um, to May in uh, 2020, and the student did not learn anything. And um, so the purpose of, of this study is to investigate the current stage of online teaching and learning delivered by EFL teachers in Sunla province in the lockdown time, and how they involve in ICT usage in terms of attitude to what to um, online teaching and learning and their computer, computer literacy. Also, I focus on exploring the problems that EFL teachers and students have to deal with uh, in implementing online teaching and learning, and importantly, from the findings and suggestions from the teacher participants, I would like to recommend some solutions to enhance the implementation of online teaching and learning in order to achieve these aims, I have three research questions. First, how is online teaching implemented in the pandemic? Uh, the second question is, 
what are the difficulties in implementing online teaching and learning? And third, what can be done to enhance the implementation of online teaching and learning effectively? And in this finding, I would like to focus on the four main parts, the literature review related to online teaching, the methodology that I use, um, the findings that I could find out, and the purposes, um, sorry, and then I will propose some recommendations. In the literature review, the first thing I want to focus on is the readiness in online teaching. So what does readiness um, to teach online mean? To Martin et al. in 2019, readiness to teach online is a state of faculty preparation. But to whom in 2016, readiness is a mixture of attitudes and experience which is impacted by the individual, contextual, and cultural vector factors. The individual factors here include the knowledge and skill of technology and pedagogy that the teacher has. With a short knowledge and skill, the teachers may be ready to teach online, so we can call it as a personal readiness. About the contextual factors, um, uh, Cambridge is in uh, 2017 mentions uh, structures, uh, resources, and professional development opportunities to support teachers to teach online. And so we can understand the contextual readiness as how well the institution is prepared for the online teaching and learning. And, um, and the last one is the uh, cultural factors. So to sum up in my present, in, in this study, um, the readiness to teach online means the um, uh, personal readiness and the contextual readiness. The teacher's background knowledge on using the computer has a very positive correlation with the acceptance of online teaching. Uh, Ebert et al. in 2002 uh, reported that teachers who have experience using the, no the computer are more likely to accept online teaching. And um, similarly, uh, Park and Son in 2009 mentioned in the findings that um, the teacher experience in um, computer, uh, computer assisted language learning uh, may make the class more interesting to students and increase their level of motivation and, and, um, um, sorry, and further generate the positive uh, outcome in their teaching. So therefore, to teach online effectively, uh, effectively the teacher needs to possess the online teaching competencies. And to sum, to summon in 2003, um, these competencies include um, the understanding of the online process, the technical skills, how to communicate in online classes, the content expertise, um, and the personal characteristic. And to address in 2011, online teaching competencies are classified into three different states in an online class. Uh, there are before teaching practices in which online teachers prepare, plan, and design the online education activities. The second stage is during the teaching in which teachers facilitate, interact, and engage learners and provide meaningful feedback after teaching, online teachers need to possess the competencies of uh, reflecting and drawing on deliver lessons to revise and update the next lesson. And according to um, some, um, some of these uh, researchers here in 2012, there are seven online teaching competencies, including active learning, administration, and leadership, active teaching and responsive, uh, responsive needs, uh, multimedia technology, uh, classroom decorums, uh, technological competence and policy enforcement. So from the studies uh, of different researchers and educators, the online teacher possess a variety of competencies and have to perform the different roles and tasks. Uh, for the effective online teaching and learning, Bill Powell's uh, a professor uh, of uh, psychology, um, an um, award of excellence in online teaching winner mentions three principles. The first one, um, 
let the student do most of the work. It is no doubt that the more time the students spend engaged with the content, the more they will learn. And with the student-centered approach, um, uh, students need to be given as many chances uh, to do the learning tasks as possible. Teachers play the roles of the supporter, not the teachers who speak and talk uh, and, and teach all the time. Another principle is uh, interactivity. So interactivity, uh, which is viewed as the heart and the soul of effective um, asynchronous learning. The interaction here it, are not between the teachers and students, but also among the students when they work together to do the learning tasks. And the last one is um, social, and cognitive, and teaching present. So in um, this study was conducted um, during and after the researcher offered a free online training course for 35 EFL teachers. The training course lasted from March to April in uh, 2020 with five sessions. And each session lasted for two hours. And here are the two pictures taken from the two training sessions that the researcher offer the EFL teachers in um, Sanla province. Um, there were 35 teachers to attend the course. And among them, there were six male teachers and 25 females. Uh, they are from 19 primary uh, school, 16 lower secondary school, and six uh, from uh, six different districts in Sanla province. And they have been teaching English for three to 20 years. And to collect data from the teacher participant, I use a mini survey before and after the training course. Um, their reflection after the training course, as well as their assignments during and after each lesson. And the recorded observation and the interviews were also used. The, um, the teacher participants were asked to respond eight questions to measure their attitude towards online teaching in a five point linked scale ranging from the completely disagree to completely agree. Um, and higher, the higher mean scores indicate the positive attitudes and lower scores indicate the negative at attitudes. And from the statistics that I collected, most of the EFL teachers responded negatively to what online teaching with the mean was lesson uh, one. And when being asked, two of the three interviewed teachers said that uh, online teaching was not effective and that students um, could not study much in online classes. And only uh, two among 35 teacher participants showed their positive attitude toward online learning. And they thought that online class were as effective as a traditional class and the student could learn much from the online class. To investigate how readily these EFL teachers were in online teaching, I focus on their computer literacy. Uh, they were asked to respond nine questions to indicate their level of computer literacy with the focus of uh, four sub skill um, Microsoft Office, online teaching, apps, um, internet experience, and computer uh, uh, experiences. The data was also collected from their familiar, uh, familiarity to some common teaching apps that are used in the training. Uh, with the collected data, data, the teacher participant showed their moderate computer literacy level and found assessing teaching apps difficult. Uh, they can use Microsoft Office, however, they're not so skillful because they can use um, just basic function of uh, PowerPoint slide and show the slide. Um, Microsoft was to, to design the lesson plan and handout only. And with, with the computer experiences, uh, male teachers seem to be more competent than females. And with the internet uh, experience, they are familiar with Facebook, the most common social Facebook uh, network in Vietnam but not others' uh, social networks. 
about the online teaching apps, um, they have never experienced experience online uh, learning before. Therefore, they use Zalo to assign the learning tasks for their students by taking photos of some fish um, of the textbook. And some other teachers use Facebook Messenger. Only one use Zoom with the limited time of 40 minutes. And many of them did not know how to use Skype, uh, Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet to teach um, online. So, um, and to understand the readiness of um, EFL teachers in online teaching and the current state of the online teaching and learning in my province, I investigated the challenges that they have to face. And these challenges uh, were, was classified into three groups. First, the difficulties um, were from the school, and most of the um, 35 teachers participants were teaching in the mountainous remote um, provinces. So therefore, um, they uh, have a lot of difficulties with the internet connection uh, or the devices. Um, so here you can see, and um, it is very common seen in many uh, schools in the Northwest of Vietnam. And in recent years, the school have been equipped uh, with the projectors, um, but not in all the classrooms. The internet is usually for the staff room and not for the classrooms. And furthermore, because of the poor management skill, the um, do it and the school management board has no action or detailed plans for the online teaching and learning at the early stage of the pandemic. Furthermore, um, there were insufficiency of relevant software package. The teachers themselves could not afford to buy uh, the teaching apps like Zooms. Therefore, the first, in the first lockdown in Vietnam, there was no online teaching and learning activities at all. And there was a statistics, uh, the statistics that I take from the uh, from Sunla Department of Education and Training. Um, the difficulties uh, were also from the teachers. Um, 35 teachers participants show their very poor ICT literacy uh, uh, skills. Many of them could only use basic teaching apps like Word and PowerPoint, but not master them, and sometimes have difficulties in using such apps. They were not familiar with online teaching apps like Zooms and Google Meet or Google Team either. And um, so they have a lot of difficulties in using them and did not explore the features or the function of these apps. And they um, did not know how to use different teaching apps to design the online lesson. The second one, um, they have very poor online teaching pedagogies, uh, but they still, uh, they still use the traditional teaching approach in which the teachers read the slide content and the student write without any interactions. The online lessons were still designed in the traditional ways in which lessons are, are, are lengthy and not concentrated. And with this traditional teaching approach in online classes, which is one way with no or lit, very little interaction, the teachers found online um, teaching inefficient and uh, students uh, got bored easily and felt as, uh, uh, sleepy. The third one, the teacher participant uh, said that it's difficult for them to manage and closely follow the student in online classes. So from this, it can be concluded that the teacher participant- uh, Excuse me, excuse me. You have five more minutes to yeah. end your uh, presentation. Okay. okay, thank you. So that is, um, the participant was very passive in online teachings. Um, and there's uh, some of the difficult difficulties from the um, from the students and um, parents yeah but because uh, of the limited time um, the so I am um, I will uh, present um, shortly uh, so to sum up um, the teachers have a very um, the readiness uh, of the EFL teachers in my province have a very low contextual and uh, individual uh, readiness. Okay. 
So in the recommendations, um, I would like to focus um, on um, the three uh, at the three stage. The first one is the authorities, uh, the the second the teachers, and the last one from the students and the parents. Uh, at the higher level, is the responsibility uh, of the authorities from the DUI to provide the detailed guidelines or the instruction uh, of how to deliver online teaching and learning, as well as training programs to teach online uh, uh, on online teaching to teachers. And the DUI can also provide the local and national TV channels for both teachers and students and build the pre-med uh, video lessons on the local TV. And as far as I know, there are nearly 7,000 lessons, uh, and among them, one, um, 1,500 TV videos are of high quality um, that are published on the national TV channels, and the student can easily assess. And how about the teachers? Sorry, uh, about the school administrations, it's very important to equip more uh, school facilities and um, making all use of the current facilities is also an effective way to support both teachers and students. And here are some of the recommendations. Yeah, this is um, the training course that I um, delivered yesterday uh, to nearly 300 uh, uh, teachers of literature in my province. And how about the teachers? What can, the, what can teachers do to improve their uh, online teaching in the lockdown? There are many different ways. Uh, they can make their own videos or, and send them to the student in case that the student cannot find the appropriate video lesson or the TV channels for the student. <clears throat> and as I know, um, um, as, as I mentioned before, there are three, sorry, um, 7,000 lessons, and um, among them, 1,500 TV videos are of high quality provided um, uh, by the MOE to the student with um, 14 um, national and local TV channels with a lot of uh, new teaching and review lessons. And the, teach, uh, the student Sorry, the teacher can ask the student to watch them on TV and send them the questions and the exercise to check the student understanding or whether they watch or not. Um, watch, uh, or not. And the, yeah, also some of the recommendations that um, the uh, teacher participants um, propose in, um, in, in the surveys. Um, based on um, basing on the three principles of teaching online effectively with lots of interactions, the um, the teacher needs to do a carefully design the online lesson um, and and make the lesson uh, simple but interesting. And the teachers can use different teaching online teaching apps to make the lesson uh, livelier and more interesting because the student make it more quickly with only one app. And many uh, of online teaching apps are free and use, uh, easy to use like Prezi or Kahoot. Uh, and one of the outstanding advantages of online teaching and learning is that teachers can use pictures, images, sounds, videos to make the lesson more attractive and livelier to catch a student's attention. Uh, okay, um, thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It's very informative and useful for both teachers and learners in Vietnam. Um, so um, I'm so sorry that we have limited time. So I have, I have to put forward some uh, um, uh, questions from the audience. Can you please stop sharing so that we can uh, share our slides? Yes. Thank you. Um, Okay, let, okay, let's come up with the first question. So how is the digital literacy considered to be an influencing uh, factor in your research? Okay, <clears throat> thank you very much for the answer. Let me show some words. Um, here I mentioned that uh, I focus on the readiness of the teachers. And if the teachers um, 
uh, skillful in ICD, or I mean their computer literacy is high enough, they can be uh, very ready for um, to teach online. So in the literature re uh, literature re uh, literature review, I also mentioned some of the studies of the researchers about the uh, compute uh, the digital literacies in the teachers' readiness in online teaching. Okay, thank you very much. And the second question is, um, what is the parental role in your research and do they have to be really digital literate as well? Yeah, okay. Well, thank you very much for this uh, interesting question. Yeah. Um, um, the, in fact, my research focus on um, the teacher's readiness um, and um, I, I cannot focus much on the uh, parents' roles in, in the research. Um, however, I, I do understand that uh, the, the teachers, um, the parents play a very important role in supporting the, the students in online teaching and learning. However, the focus and um, the participants of this research um, was not um, about the, the parents. So it just, uh, I, I mentioned some, some um, points or some ideas about the parents. It is about the, um, the parents' um, support. Um, I, in the recommendations, the, the teachers also um, uh, figure out the roles of the parents. However, um, that is not the focus of my research. Um, here I can, here yeah, um, from the recommendation of the teacher participants says that, that if the parents cooperate with them more closely and they can follow um, their instruction, the their um, children can learn better in online classes. So mm -hmm. the teachers, um, the parents have a very important role, especially when the students are of the small age or at the mm. primary level. Yeah, yeah. So I can see the broad umbrella of this in uh, this research. Uh, so um, let, let come up with the final question. Uh, can Zalo be an uh, the official platform for both teachers and students? Can it be authoritative and secure enough to protect users' privacy? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, um, I, from the data collected uh, in the research, I can see many teachers in my province use Zalo as an official platform for both teachers and students because um, a lot of students are from the remote areas and they don't have the laptop. They, they don't know how to use Zoom or they don't know how to use Google Meet or Microsoft Teams, so they, can, they cannot have the online classes. So the teacher usually contact uh, with the parents via Zalo groups, and they copy, they, uh, they take photos of the, the lesson and then um, send to the parents. So that Zalo's um, in my province has been considered as one uh, official platform um, mm. uh, for both teachers and, uh, and, and parents to keep contact. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so this is the end of, of your session today. Thank you very much. And on behalf of VIC 2021, we wish you all the best. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Hope, hope to see you soon in a very soon yeah, day. Okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Mm. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, it's time for us to uh, uh, take a photo uh, with uh, our section today. Can you please turn on your camera? Uh, Put a heart for us. Yeah. Thank you very much for your patience to uh, stay uh, up to now. <laughs>